good afternoon good morning to both james and david so as we know in the colombian second round of the colombian presidential election has just started and just to discuss a few things we have with to today we have with us and james jordan from the alliance from global justice and david escobar both directly from colombia james has been coordinating the colombian solidarity campaign of uh, AFGJ since 2008, if I'm not wrong. And David, we have, we have already interviewed him once. He is a journalist and documentary filmmaker living in Cali, Colombia. So welcome, both of you. I'll just directly go into the question. So first is for James. I mean, the election, I mean, voting started about an hour and a half ago, right? So <clears throat> what sort of news are you getting? What do you think is the situation? Is everything normal or else? Um, I don't really know. David might have heard more than I have at this point. What I did uh, here last night, you know, before I went to sleep or early this morning and didn't get to sleep till late, but I had heard uh, several reports of troops being uh, deployed throughout the city and throughout the region. <clears throat> I know that there's this uh, so-called planned democracy. It doesn't seem like it has to do much with democracy to me, but the military <clears throat> and the police have deployed something like 320,000 people throughout the country, and these are some of the same troops that have been arresting young journalists, you know, and taking them off the streets just two days, one day before the election. So I know that that's going on. Uh, David is going to go vote this morning in a polling place that uh, we saw pictures of that it's completely flooded. So, I mean, there's that sort of thing going on, but here's hoping that proceed as normal, but uh, my hopes are too high. Oh, well, David, did you hear anything? Uh, I, yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, you okay. can. Um, yeah, the, the situation about the floated place was um, already fixed by the public um, company uh, called them Cali. However, there have been uh, about 40 demonstration demonstrators that uh, were captured by the police all around the country uh, and they were related to the demonstration of the national strike from, from the last year situation is that they, there are, have been many irregularities during the elections process, the software used by the state to control the number of votes or the, the, the poll, to control the results of the polls, doesn't, the, the state has not allowed to be um, supervised by any external sources. So the opposition feels it uh, it has no guarantees in during this process. So the state, uh, the Colombian state, is like taking uh, um, the meet is is carrying out uh, meetings or doing meetings within, with the generals, with the military forces and with the police in case of a, of a strike or that something like, or, or demonstrate, demonstrations go on the street. So the situation is kind of um, tense. Okay, so the, I, I... Uh, since you have described uh, all this thing about the software, we have been hearing about this since since the electoral process started, right? They have not audited the software, they have not uh, let uh, international organizations audit it or something like that. 
So in, in this situation, there, the question of fraud is always associated with elections in Colombia. And we have also seen uh, like the polls, the polls of voting intention are giving like, like different kinds of results or are showing that the two candidates are very close in the voting intentions. So David, in, the, in this situation, how much is the probability of a fraud? Well, um, having encountered that during the Senate elections, were still about 700,000 votes that were recovered by the supervision of the observers. Uh, it's very probable that the fraud exists in many different ways. Um, but the, the party of the government has all the has a control of all the entities from the state that has control over that. So it's, it's a very unequal situation uh, between these two forces. However, uh, what we have seen in different polls is that in, in, in different um, encuestas, is that the Pacto Historico has been raising the number of both and the, and the traditional parties represented by Rodolfo Fernandez are decreasing. So we, with that tendency, it's very probable that in a right, in a right or just uh, poll, the Pacto Historico wins these elections. Okay, thanks uh, for that answer. And James, uh, one question: Like, when will, mm, when can we expect the first results? And I mean, not the final one, but just the first one. I know you will be transmitting live, uh, breaking news and things like that. So, when can we expect the results? Well, we're going to start um, transmitting live at 3.30 be a time through the central time in the United States. And people can go to uh, AFTJ Alliance for Global Justice, a Facebook page or YouTube channel to follow those results. But I don't know, the results will probably be coming in around maybe as early as five. We'll see, but we'll be there following them and reporting and doing interviews. I also wanted to say in terms of the observation, the international observation, even under the best circumstances, we had people going to the north of Calca, which has some of the highest uh, levels of violence in all of Colombia, political violence. And the official observers, the MOI, the mission of electoral observers, pulled, they rescinded our uh, credentials because they said the area is too dangerous. But this is what's happening all over Colombia in the rural areas where people are being threatened to vote, threatened before the vote, and where there will be the most irregularities, even under the best conditions, the official observers aren't going there because they say it's too dangerous. And how can a vote be fair if it's too dangerous to even let observers in. But we're going, AFGJ is going, we will be there. We will be observing. But um, yeah, the, the infrastructure, even under the best of circumstances, is not there to assure that these places where the level is highest and where the chance of fraud is highest, they are not there observing because they say it's too dangerous. So that's the context of the vote today. Okay, thanks a lot to both of you for giving this uh, background and uh, like taking time. I know David is going to vote, so all the best. And let's hope everything goes normally, despite whatever we are used to in case of